Hello, this is Pastor Gene Kim from San Jose Bible Baptist Church. So throughout this coronavirus outbreak, there are, um, there are unfortunately people taking advantage of this by making money, gaining attention, gaining more views and subscribers by claiming that they made prophetic predictions about the coronavirus. Now, some of this is actually very deceptive because it seems like that it's very true and it can actually deceive gullible people who actually don't have rational critical thinking, especially grounded on the Word of God being spirit-filled. I'm going to give some examples over here and give a warning and a danger about some of these people that are spreading this bad testimony among Christians that even news media are, and liberals and atheists are trying to take advantage of. Okay, so the first one here is Perry Stone. I'm going to give a prophecy from Perry Stone. He claimed that he received this vision where the Wuhan coronavirus would empty out cities and people. And I began to look, and I was in a city. I was in a U.S. city. Now, I'll be honest with you. It didn't, it didn't look like any city I recognized, but it did have large skyscrapers with modern buildings. And I remember looking at it, and to my amazement, all the people were inside, but there was nobody on the street. And I mean nobody. There were no taxis in operation, no buses, no children playing on the sidewalks, no people shopping. I mean, it was like this entire city was completely shut down. So what he's trying to take advantage of is that because of this vision that he saw of empty cities of nobody around, that people are going to think, oh, so man, what a prophecy. This guy's onto something here. But if he truly had a, a genuine prophecy, my question is this, why is this dated March 16th? It's like a couple days before this thing happened. It's like some anybody can predict this. Now, he claimed that he had this kind of vision uh, many years back, but then when it comes to like the notes to prove it, he actually gave this kind of ex uh, convenient excuse. So let me play it over here. I have these notes, and I actually looked for them before I came on this with you, and I couldn't find them. They're here. They could be with 25,000 books upstairs or in five different desks anywhere. So... He claimed that he had these notes that recorded these events to prove it to the people, but then they're conveniently gone. Uh, he says that if he finds them, then he'll show it to the people. Well, I hope he does, because it doesn't look good for him. But let's say even if he does uh, prove it, the problem is this. The problem is, is that in his vision, it was very abstract. You'll notice that over here, the drawing shows that's not the point of the vision of empty people. It's more of the city in chaos, burning to the ground, smoke everywhere, as if skyscrapers are falling. And that's what he claimed his vision was, these skyscrapers being destroyed and all that. Well, obviously, we don't see something like this with the coronavirus. It's actually all desolate there, not chaos all over. It's emptiness, desertion, rather than chaos everywhere. See? So it's like he's trying to use anything out there where he can try to prove a prophecy. But that's the danger of Joseph Smith and Ellen G. White prophecies, how Mormons and Seventh-day Adventists are able to somewhat prove the prophecies is making it abstract that can fit any event. I mean, when you look at this picture, you can fit that with any kind of big national crisis or event that could happen. And then that could prove that you're a prophet. I mean, one of my YouTube videos uh, gave a question, church is gone by 2020. Does that make me a prophet? I didn't get a vision or use that to claim advantage and gain attention from people. And what's even sadder is that Perry Stone want the people to kind of spread this video. He kept emphasizing that fact to spread the video, even though he claimed that he didn't want a big online platform. He's got enough views. Then why would he uh, say that and then try to urge people to spread it? But how this guy is truly one of these charismatic preachers of this false gospel and heresy of wealth and prosperity and healing with this prophecy and visions trying to take advantage of people is by this example. He's trying to sell his product over here claiming that communion or the Lord's Supper, if they would buy his product, that it would provide, believe it or not, physical healing. Yeah, if you eat unleavened bread and drink the grape juice, that's supposed to heal your body and your sickness. 
But what's worse, he even claims that it gives forgiveness of sins, like the Catholic Church teaches. Here it goes. We also talk about in this book how that through receiving daily communion, it is possible for a person to receive the threefold atoning work that Jesus did on the cross. It includes physical healing for the body, the healing, of course, of the human spirit, removing of sin and the iniquity that's in a person's life. No, 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 no. That, that is so messed up. So you'll notice over here that he's already a false prophet. Even if he claims that the coronavirus outbreak was a true prophecy, according to the word of God, a false prophet can give a true prophecy at the book of Deuteronomy. But how we know that he's a false prophet is that if it contradicts the word of the Lord, and you see that plainly over here, this is completely Catholic doctrine over here that is not of the word of God. Okay, here's another one by Joseph Prince. And notice this, why no virus can come near you. He claims that he had a prophecy around 2018 that there's going to be this new virus coming out used by the devil that natural scientists in the medicine world cannot keep up with. So he tries to take advantage of that to spread the fame with people. Now, you'll notice that he's got tons of subscribers and then his other videos about the coronavirus already have passed, uh, surpassed a million in other coronavirus videos. But you'll notice over here how he's trying to spread this. This is what people are doing, trying to teach stuff like this so that they can spread the word and gain more attention and followers. Now, I'm not going to read all of this for time's sake, but you can pause the video and just read it. He wants to spread around, translate into different languages, and he claims the promise of Psalms 91 for this. Now, I noticed this is going around through onliners where they're claiming Psalms 91 so that the coronavirus cannot infect them. But you got to realize this, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul, one of the greatest apostles and Christians who ever lived, prayed for God that he would be healed, but he was not healed. And that disease was sent from Satan, as 2 Corinthians 12, and God said that the infirmity, that he would not heal him. See, Psalms 91 is not a doctrinal application to the Christian church today. That is an Old Testament passage. Old Testament is obviously different from New Testament. We're the New Testament Christian church. We're not Old Testament Jews. Now, he gives one of the false teachings that he gives while taking advantage of this coronavirus prophecy is that a saved believer will not be infected. And that he also claims Psalms 91 and then he gives a prayer that the disease will not harm the Christian believer, but also the family. Now, look, I'm not against praying that the Lord would protect us from the coronavirus and that we gain healing. But it's, again, like the Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians 12. He prayed for healing, but it was not God's will. Sometimes you got to understand that even when we pray for healing, that does not guarantee 100% healing. Especially if you have a healer touching you, that does not heal you. Those signs are long gone. That was back to the Jews. That was back to the Jews, not New Testament Christians today. Now, if any of you have questions about that, watch my video, How to Witness to Charismatics. How to Witness to Charismatics, and it's under my name. You can find it in this channel, and it'll explain that the Christian church, the only reason why they partook in signs and wonders was that that was a different dispensational time period for the Jews but as God turned from the nation of Israel to the Christian church, it's no longer to the Christian church today. All right, uh, let me just play this video. If you're being attacked in your body a lot, it's because new health is coming your way. If you respond with eyes of faith and look at the Lord, you're going to turn the whole thing around and all of a sudden you're going to see all your diseases all right, floating on the seashore. Back and forth, back and forth. All right, dead. Can I have a good amen? Stand to your feet as I rebuke this fear. All right, so it sounds like he's praying heart. for God to rebuke the fear, which sounds good. But then heart. it God transitions where God would heal them completely of this coronavirus, not just to the individual Jesus infected, but to the whole family, the individual and the whole family. The here. Okay, so listen. That's listening to this word right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be thou uprooted. In the name of Jesus, come out of their lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be bound from them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you to your angels around us. And this week as we go forth, I pray for our Father in Jesus' name that everyone under the sound of my voice will walk in the protection 
of Psalms 91. Though a thousand fall at our side and ten thousand on the right hand, it will not come near us. Let no evil happen to them. Let no plague come near them and their family, their dwelling. And Father, I pray in Jesus' name that we... So you'll notice right here that he also prayed that the coronavirus would not come to the individual or to the whole family. Now, how many hundreds, if not thousands of Christians out there, especially under persecution from China, who had people who were infected by the coronavirus and even died? Are you going to say that any Christian out there, oh, it's not going to happen to any Christian. Okay, if this does happen to a Christian, then are you going to say to that person, you must not be saved then? You must not be a saved believer because if you're a saved believer, you'd be protected by this coronavirus. That's horrible. That can hurt and damage Christian lives, including the elderly because they're more susceptible to this. Okay, so here's another one, and this one is uh, by Emmanuel Makandiwa. He's also a very famous big shot pastor. He supposedly gave a prophecy about the coronavirus about two years ago, I think 2018 probably, or a little bit longer than that, uh, that a disease was spread around the world that natural scientists can't keep up with. Now, you notice how abstract that prophecy is, right? So because of that abstract prophecy, he's able to take advantage of this current situation of the coronavirus and claim, hey, so this applies to the coronavirus situation. But not really, because look how he gives this prophecy about this disease. It doesn't really match the coronavirus. Again, remember the prophecy that I gave about a disease. Now each time I'm praying, I'm seeing now it's coming closer and closer and closer. A disease from the sea, which will kill more people than any disease that you have fought before. Okay. <laughs> So you notice right over here that he said that this disease that's going to happen, it's going to kill more people than any other disease that's before. No, that's not true. Already people are comparing statistics of people who died with the flu with the coronavirus. So that's obviously false. But even if the coronavirus were to suppress the flu, you got to think about previous things back at history. I mean, there were diseases that killed, wiped off like millions of people, the Black Plague, for example. So obviously, this guy's already giving a false prophecy. See, that's what Mormons and Seventh-day Adventists do. They take abstract prophecies that can fit with any event and then try to find something true in the abstract prophecy that can fit with the event and make it true. But any part that's false in it, they ignore. See, that's a false prophet. And atheists and liberals that I've witnessed to will claim that the Bible is not a true book because you can see prophecies in there that match with some of these false prophets that made it abstract and can fit with any event. That's a bad testimony to Christianity and a disgrace to the Word of God. Okay, the next one here is by Kenneth Copeland. Now, you already know from the title, it's ridiculous. So this is what he suddenly heard from God. And suddenly, the Word of the Lord came to him. So I, I jumped up, ran, got my notepad, and wrote it down. 924. This disease called CODV-19 will be over much sooner than you think. Christian people all over this country praying have overwhelmed it. Give me all the glory, saith the Spirit of grace, and many, many people will come to know me through it. I'm still Lord over this nation. I'm on the throne, and faith in me changes things. All right, now you notice uh, this is pretty bad as it is. Some of you may have heard the governor of New York or the politician involved at New York mentioning that this is going to go much longer than they anticipate, like months long. Now, I hope that this coronavirus will be over soon. Don't get me wrong. I as much as wish that, but look at this pastor claiming that the Lord spoke to him that this coronavirus will be much so over sooner than you think. Well, if it goes longer, then what's the whole lost world going to see that as for Christians? Oh, you prophesied it would be over soon, and that ruins the testimony of Christian churches. Not only that, it damages people, especially people who've been uh, prepping up with the food and then 
pre being prepared for the coronavirus incident, but then they like just dismiss it because yeah, it'll be gone soon because it was prophesied. Well, pretty bad. All right. Well, anyway, here's another one. This is by TB Joshua, and he's getting a lot, lot of fame concerning about the coronavirus. Yes, you read the title right. Uh, the end of coronavirus prophecy by Prophet TB Joshua, and then. Uh, You'll notice over here, it says coronavirus is being washed out by the rain of God. Yes, you read that right. So supposedly the rain that's spreading around our world today is supposedly washing away the coronavirus. That's what this prophet claims. A result. And what is the result? If we say the rain will wipe it, this epidemic out of the, the earth, it must start from Wuhan, China, where the whole thing started. Right now, it is raining there. So, if you have people there where the corona Barrel started, call them, they will tell you it's raining. And uh, this is not supposed to happen in that place at this season, but it is raining. You know, it's just like a forced clap, like, oh, am I supposed to clap here? So that's how charismatic preachers yes. run. And what is the purpose? To wipe out this epidemic called Corona what? Coronavirus. Whether you come in contact with the rain or no, that does not matter. Oh, man. So you notice right over there that whether you come in contact with the rain that washes away the coronavirus or not, it doesn't matter. And he's saying that it's raining all around the world as a sign that this coronavirus will be over. Okay, so now this is one of probably the top ones that is probably really bad. In fact, the liberal media took advantage of this and start to make fun of Christians about their prophecies on coronavirus. So here we go, this guy. Listen to the words that I speak to you at this moment, says the living God. Why do you fear, United States? For I have spoke to you before, and I speak to you again. I have extended and opened a window of mercy. To this nation at this time. So what he's going to say is that because of the Trump administration, that the coronavirus will not harm America because of the godly stand that Christians are doing at America. <laughs> so here we go. Therefore, the virus that they speak of, the prognostication, the diagnosis, the fear, my mercy is the quarantine that shall be greater than what they have spoken to you, United States. And because of the administration that stands in this land, who honor me, who honor the covenants of your forefathers that have a constitution, and because they have aligned themselves with Israel, and because they have sided on the right side of life, life in the womb, life given outside of the womb. Therefore, I give life to this nation and I give mercy. Do not fear. This virus is the spirit of God. Whoa, okay. Now, uh, this is really bad that even mainstream news like Fox News posted this about a different Christian pastor named Sean Boltz. The Lord showed me the end of the coronavirus, so he gave the prophecy too. You'll notice over here that what he says, We're going to see it come to an end, Boltz told Fox News. It's not going 
to be the pandemic that people are afraid of. I do believe it's the answer to prayer. Look at this now with people of every type, Catholics and Christians. You see that ecumenic is, uh, ecumenical movement, one world religion. We can't afford a moment of darkness in history, he added. God has a plan. So you notice already, this is already ruining the testimony of Christians around the world. So this is just really bad. And then he played Bethel music, of all things, that followed up with it to show that and to encourage the people about his prophecy concerning the end of the coronavirus. So a lot of the liberal news media and atheists are taking advantage of this, which is a bad testimony to Christians. And uh, if any people have concerns or probably are upset with me about rebuking pastors, the point is this, is that you got to understand the Lord Jesus Christ, who he rebuked more than any person, is not the prostitutes and not the tax collectors. It was religious leaders. Why? Because they're responsible for sheep, for people's souls. These people are supposed to be people responsible for people's souls. And these are people who are supposed to feed the flock. But they have rubbed dirt on the Christian church, ruined our testimonies, made an open prey, and a ridicule to the atheist and liberal world. So this is such a bad testimony for believers. Please beware of these people. Warn others about them. Post this video so that they can avoid these people. And please, if you can do whatever it takes, avoid them. Become a Bible believer. Now, some of the things you heard me talk about can be found at Amazing Dispensational Truth from Genesis to Revelation. If you watch that video, it can be eye-opening about Bible-believing truth. And then it can help you avoid 90% of wrong doctrine if possible. Lord bless you and please be careful and watch out for these people.